Fast Tuesday, we examined one of the worst, laziest, most boring 80s style club cocktails and its duo, the Mind Eraser and Mind Replacer, and I wasn't exactly a fan. That being said, I went to the drawing board and today we are gonna go revisit those and make them significantly better by turning them into actual proper cocktails on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, either, ho there, my name is Mike. I'm a bartender from the Kalamazoo area. And today we're gonna dive straight into a revisit on a previous cocktail that we did this past Tuesday. So this past Tuesday, we looked at the Mind Eraser and Mind Replacer, really history, historically vague uh, club cocktails from the 80s. And uh, they sucked, they were bad. Um, really bad, actually. And I wanted to go to the drawing board because I thought that there was something to be done with that. Like, the idea was there to make something better than what they came up with. So, what we're gonna do today is revisit those drinks with a spec that I came up with that turns them into something actually interesting and follows somewhat, you know, some set of rules regarding how to make cocktails. So there's a couple different things that I changed from the original uh, to what we're gonna do now. The first thing was I'm changing the base spirit. Tia Maria is the main liqueur in a mind eraser and has a rum base. It didn't make sense to mix vodka with that because it wouldn't add any additional character, it would just add alcohol. So I swapped from our base of vodka to rum. This is Plantation Three Star. It is some of the best rum that you can get. And in this particular case, I find that it has a light coconut essence to it that complements both the Mind Eraser and Mind Replacer very, very well. Next thing I changed was I'm cutting back the overall amount of liqueur in each cocktail um, to one ounce from two because that's too much. Uh, additionally, I'm going to balance that by introducing citrus, lemon, and lime to the uh, Mind Replacer and Eraser, and you'll see how much we're doing that in. Really, the gist of what I'm saying is I'm turning these cocktails from shooters into daisy formatted uh, soda lengthened cocktails. And I think that's going to give us a significantly better <laughs> overall, more approachable and worthwhile drinking cocktail. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and make them because the fortunate benefit of me uh, making up my own cocktails is I don't have to talk about the history because there isn't any. We're gonna make a mind eraser and a mind replacer side by side with the new spec uh, in order to you know, just catch them side by side like we did last time. We're going to start with our Mind Eraser, which begins with a half an ounce of Orgeau. Orgeau is a syrup made from almonds. It comes from France. It's really great. It shows up in a lot of uh, tiki cocktails, which uh, is some of the inspiration for this overall flavor I'm trying to build in this cocktail. Uh, and I think that unlike regular simple, Orgeau is gonna add some character here while also providing a sort of cohesive sweetness. Next up, we're gonna do three to four, up to five, dashes of Angostura bitters. We're going to need an ounce of lemon juice. Now that might seem weird to some of you out there to combine coffee with lemon, but there's actually kind of a, a really nice experiential sort of balancing of the bitterness of coffee and the sweetness we're adding alongside citrus. Uh, and in places like Italy, it's quite common to be served espresso that has had a, a lemon peel expressed over it. So. Definitely something to consider here. That was why I chose this direction. Next, we need one ounce of our Tia Maria coffee liqueur. And finally, two ounces of our Plantation Three Star Rum. Love this stuff. So that's our Mind Eraser 2.0 built and ready to shake. Let's move on to the replacer. The replacer starts with half an ounce of cream of coconut. Uh, I do have a proper can of cream of coconut down here. I didn't think it was necessary to bust out for this use. Uh, so I'm using real cocoa, uh, squeezable cream of coconut. It's not the fanciest or best product on the market, but it's commonly available and does actually do a really good job of both sweetening and providing the experiential creaminess of cream of coconut and a robust coconut flavor. So. I'm going with it. This stuff, uh, I will say, is quite difficult to pour if it's been kept in the fridge, which it does advise you do, um, you know, once it's been opened, which is a little ridiculous, but we'll give it a shake, and then I'm going to pour it directly into the shaker about half an ounce's worth. Next up, we are going to need a full ounce of lime juice for the replacer. The combination of raspberry and lime, I think, is rather time-tested and generally very approvable for, uh, for most palates. Cutting that with coconut was sort of an inspiration to do something tropically adjacent without being tiki adjacent, which is what the mind eraser is going for. 
We're also going to add two to three dashes of orange bitters. I'm using Fee Brothers. I, I, I like it quite a lot, actually. Next up, we need a ounce of our Chambord Black Raspberry Liqueur, the thing that makes a mind eraser a mind eraser. Replacer, sorry, replacer. I, oh, geez. <laughs> Maybe I should drink that one first. Apparently I'm already losing my mind. <laughs> and then finally, we need two ounces of our Plantation Three Star Rum. Boom. We're going to add ice to both of these and shake them simultaneously because I am an agent of chaos. Both of these are going to get hit with our traditional one cube cracked, one cube whole ethos. And throw our large cubes in there. Cap these on up. Tap them down and shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill, combine, and dilute. Uh, oh, that one exploded. Okay, that one's not set. That one isn't set. Whoopsies. Good enough. <laughs> we're gonna not do that again. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna go with Colin's glasses for this one. And into each of them, we have to crack a cube of ice. Once we've got this filled up with ice, we're gonna take some fresh out of the fridge Topo Chico. Uh, I think it's kind of important to go specifically for a very nice sparkling water here, as opposed to just a regular club soda. Um, something like Shrups would work, but I think the nicer the better, and I think Topo Chico is the best on the market, honestly. Fill those up part way with our soda water to get that effervescence going. I'm going to grab a cocktail strainer, and we're going to strain our cocktails over the ice. Starting with the Mind Eraser. Next up, the Mind Replacer. Honestly, I think I like the way the Mind Replacer looks a lot better, mostly because it's just got this nice opalescent pink color to it from the cream of coconut and raspberry liqueur, and that's just charming. I love that. Now, both of these need to be garnished, and I'm going to do that in both cases with a wheel of the accompanying citrus. In the case of the Mind Eraser, that is a lemon wheel. I'm just gonna sit that down there alongside the ice. And in the case of the Mind Replacer, that is a lime, which is fortunately going to sit just a little bit higher. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Mind Eraser 2.0 and a Mind Replacer 2.0. Alrighty, so now that we've cleaned up our station a little bit, we can go ahead and taste our new cocktails. I'm gonna start with the Mind Eraser because it only seems appropriate to uh, erase before I replace. Cheers. That is so delightfully weird. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's clearly leaning in the direction that a sort of robust, savory tiki cocktail would. Not like a Mai Tai necessarily, not something fruity, but something more like a Queen's Park Swizzle, but with like coffee added to it. Um, the combo of uh, Orjo, bitters, and rum, along with that Tia Maria, is is just so rich and, and full-bodied and robust, and there's this really nice, just sharp lemon acidity cutting through it and balancing it out, and it's getting lengthened a little bit by that soda, and it's, it's good. It's not to everyone's palate. If you like, you know, drinks more like this where there's like a fruity element to it, you're gonna hate this probably. Or if you don't really like the flavor of coffee, you're probably not going to like this. But it's significantly more elevated, way more balanced, way more approachable, frankly, than the original because this is better and more interesting than the original. You're not getting sickly sweet, ridiculously large pours of liqueur and then topped with vodka and soda, which sounds gross. You're getting a properly prepared and experientially considerate cocktail. And I think I hit the nail on the head in terms of turning that god awful mind eraser into something that won't make me want to vomit unless I have more than two of them. Then I might want to buy it. <laughs> ah, that's so good. It's boring on like a chocolatey sort of taste. It might be a combination of like the baking spice notes in the, uh, in the Angostura and then the dark rum base of the Tia Maria alongside the cold brew flavor it brings. It's, it's, it's so fascinating and, and weird in that way, but it works. Uh, and I think that is 
for sure something you'd want to serve at like an 80s themed party. I think it, I think it really would do well. Now I've thoroughly erased my mind. It is time to replace it. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, I ain't that just a smoothie in a glass in the best way possible. <laughs> I will say it is, um, it is showing kind of bitter, mostly because there's no pure sweetness um, to combat the bitter tartness of lime and the sort of kind of astringentness of um, lime juice. But despite that, it is still bright and fruity it's not lacking in body. You get this nice creamy texture from the cream of coconut and it just, it just rolls back. And we talked about in the last episode when we talked about the original versions of the Mind Eraser and Replacer was that people were just chugging them. They weren't tasting anything. They were layered for no reason. These are actually worth tasting and will still get you lit as fuck. Relatively speaking, these are about as alcoholic as the originals but won't make you want to throw it right back up the second it hits your stomach. The raspberry coconut, you know, combo is real nice. You get that up front along with some of that rum character carrying it along. And then this bitterness comes up. I'm thinking mostly from the lime, but likely also from the bitters. Um, two to three dashes is not that much, I don't think. It's definitely showing a lot here though, probably because the raspberry is not as you know, strong uh, a flavor, it doesn't stand up to it as well. And the cream of coconut's not sweetening enough to pull it away. So maybe one dash is enough, but I, I do appreciate bitterness in a cocktail. It does make me want to make this with Campari instead of Chambord, because I think that'd be really fascinating. But I think that despite its sort of objective balance towards a like semi-sweet bitterness is really, really respectable because otherwise it would be a glass of sugar. Because I did it last time, I think it's only fair that we do another food stunt by taking a sip from both at the same time and seeing how that goes because it actually made the originals a lot better too. Whoa, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's a flavor attack. It's so abrasive <laughs> and sharp, but but it's got this awesome evolution. <laughs> oh my God, that's cool. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but taking them both at the same time was like bah, a wave of flavors of just spices and, and almond and coconut and, and lime and, and like really the essence of citrus in general specifically, because it's both lemon and lime at the same time. And then you get this rich coffee-ness and then this, this, this rolling smoothness of the Plantation Three Star. I, I hate to say it, that was also really great. <laughs> yeah, that was, so that is um, the Mind Replacer and Mind Eraser 2.0, um, revived 80s Dark Ages cocktails that I think are actually worth trying at home. Something that if you've got the stuff for them, they're worth making. And if you were to make them for other people, I imagine they'd be pretty goddamn happy about it. Do they need anything? Probably, I think maybe the Mind Replacer 2.0 could use a little bit more sweetness, like a bar spoon of simple, um, just to kind of round out some of that bitterness because it is pretty strong. Uh, that would also wake up some of the berry flavors and the coconut and, and pull it together a little bit better. But then again, a daisy is sort of supposed to be without sweetener. So the fact that there's already some in there breaks the rule a little bit. I don't know, up to you. You could tune that to your preference pretty easily. The Mind Eraser, I think is perfect. I think it's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's exactly as, loud and ridiculous and, and brazen and, t I mean, a little bit tacky, frankly, because of the Tia Maria at the very least, uh, that it makes it a perfect 80s cocktail and, and a perfect revival of an 80s cocktail, especially because it was built on some fucking rules. Anyway, that has been today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, secondary look at some uh, old school 80s drinks and, you know, bringing them back into the 21st century to, not suck anymore. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe. I make one of these videos every single Friday and then I'm starting to get into making them on Tuesdays as well. So if you want a lot of content, I've got a lot of content to make and show you. Aside too, I, I, I went on the channel this stick earlier today before filming to just see how things were doing and check if there were any comments or anything. You guys got my vodka, my White Claw Vodka Highball video to like 26 views in like a week. 
which is crazy to me because there's like seven people following this channel. Uh, so thanks. That's really awesome. I appreciate it. It was really cool to like open up the page and be like, oh, 26 views. That's really dope. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it. Anyway, like I said, thanks for watching. Click around. There's some videos popping up in the cards now. And I've got a title card at the end where you can click another video you might want to watch. Do that. Watch more videos. Share them with your friends. See how it goes. In the meantime, I will be replacing and uh, erasing and replacing my mind back and forth for the next uh, two hours or so, sipping down on these. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my fucking afternoon. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, I'll catch you guys around. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. What are you looking at?